Good morning. It's good to, uh, I would love to say it's good to see you again in Fitzroy. I'm hoping you're out there because at the minute I'm in my front room, uh, what we call the Fitzroy room, because this is where we have Fitzroy meetings, um, staring into a camera, hoping that somebody out there is listening. But if you're listening and you're a Fitzroy person and it's 11 o'clock as usual, then you'll not have appeared in church yet. You'll still be in the car, in the car park, waiting to get in. So, um, but if you've, uh, if you've lined up with us this morning, we're very thankful for that. And I'm delighted to say that as a result of coronavirus, um, one of the advantages we've had is so many people from all over the world um, coming into the Fitzroy service. And if you're one of those, then you're very welcome. And thank you so much for all the positive comments that we get, um, uh, have had in the last couple of weeks. First of all, in Fitzroy, we do this thing called Fitzroy Family Focus. If you see my eyes looking down, that's because my pulpit is below me and all my notes are there. But uh, if you're a Fitzroy person, and actually some of these things are open to anybody uh, anywhere in the world, um, please bear with us. I believe that now, um, right at this moment in time, live on Sunday, that there's a Fitzroy children's ministry going on. And I know that last week Paul Lutton was doing a wonderful children's talk based on Toy Story. So if you have kids, there's a program for them. Put them in a tablet in the other room and then you might have uh, more chance to uh, to listen to what we're doing here uh, in the main service as such. Then this afternoon, there's a prayer time, three to four. It's a call to prayer across Ireland and we're meeting from three o'clock to four. Go onto the website to find information or go onto my blog to find information. 24-7 website is information. And they give you their options for what to pray between three o'clock and four. And the last 10 minutes they're wanting is to kneel humbly before God and, and that the whole nation would be on our knees um, praying at this time of uh, great need. So that's three to four this afternoon on Palm Sunday. Tonight, Gary Burnett will do his second in the series, um, Paul and Ten which is an amazing series, and you can get that. We'll go live at 7 tonight, and then we'll be up all week. And if you haven't seen the first one, it's up there to watch as well. And our young people will be on Instagram. They get down. The cool kids get down on Instagram, and they have a passion worship from 7 uh, to half 7 on a Sunday night, and that's great. If You're uh, you're, all, you're all welcome to that, but it's uh, it's, it's aimed at the, the younger uh, folk. Uh, then uh, from Tuesday to Friday, uh, I or Janice and I will be going live on Facebook. We've had some fun with that this week. Uh, we've had some gems of uh, maybe uh, a few verses, but we've also done a bit of Van Morrison in a North Antrim brogue and just had a chance to chat. So um, but 2 o'clock to about 2.12, 2.15, every, well, Tuesday to Friday, if you want to get us on Facebook live. And then Tuesday night at 7, we have our Zoom prayer meeting. So if you want on that, you need to give me your email address so as I can invite you on to that. You will get an invitation to that around 6.30 and then come on at 7. We had a wonderful time of prayer last Tuesday night. Um, Friday evening at 7, we're hoping to have a good Friday service. Um, and uh, we're conjuring some really interesting stuff for that. So please join us uh, on Friday at 7. And if you would join us on Friday at 7 with maybe a little bit of bread, a little bit of wine, then we will do a little informal communion with you at the as part of that service on Friday. Fitzroy Youth Ministry on Facebook, Fitzroy Children's Ministry on Facebook, my blog, prayers on the general website, uh, how to give on there because there's no plate being passed around today uh, and get in touch with the months if there's any way we can help you uh, going forward with coronavirus issues. Let us come to worship. And as we come to worship, I want to read what I probably will read a lot during these uh, next weeks and months. Uh, Hebrews chapter four. It's a go to for me. And I just wonder, as we come into um, uh, Gareth and Karen and Elle leading us uh, in our worship this morning, uh, I want to read this verse that we should hold very tightly and preciously during these days. Hebrews chapter four and verse 16. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Amazing grace. Let us worship God.
We're moving into some uh, prayers and readings. I've asked Heather Kerry, who works in Mornington, down on the lower Ormo, uh, to do our prayers this morning. It's uh, an incredibly powerful prayer um, that looks into a neighbourhood uh, in coronavirus times. Um, and um, she has uh, an amazing presence down there. And uh, we're going to be praying specifically for some of the projects that are happening around us um, at this moment uh, in, in, in lower Ormo. Um, as she does that, it's going to be um, woven into the readings for today. Erin Humphrey, who actually lives in that community, Erin is going to read um, from 2 Corinthians 4, and we're going to sing one of her hymns in the middle of that as well. Lord, Paul said to the Corinthians, you're feeling hard-pressed on every side. This morning, our communities feel that pressure, like the psalmist, we lament. Our schools and nurseries are closed. We no longer hear the schoolyard games and the footballs bounce. Our youth club doors are shut. We no longer hear our teens' music, laughter and banter. Our community centres are empty. We no longer hear the knitting needles knit prem babies' hats, the cutlery at the pensioners' lunch, the Pilates weary participants chat as they leave. The after school kids laughter over their snack. Our special needs community provision has ceased. No sensory rooms to explore. Our leisure centres say no entry, no splashing in the pool, sweating in the gyms, five aside at lunchtime, slimming world chats. Our children's parks are locked up, the swings hang silently, the climbing frames abandoned. Our grandparents are not walking with us, sharing wisdom, joy and treats. Our programmes for the unemployed have been shelved. Our probation service has stopped all placement opportunities for young offenders. Our hairdressers, barbers, dry cleaners, takeaways, cafes, garden centres, shopping centres, cinemas, theatres and sporting facilities are all locked up with no opening date posted on the doors. Our church bells are silent. The reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 12 and 16 to 18. And I'm reading from the contemporary English version. We are like clay jars in which this treasure is stored. The real power comes from God and not from us. We often suffer, but we are never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. In times of trouble, God is with us and when we are knocked down, we get up again. We face death every day because of Jesus. Our bodies show what his death was like, so his life can also be seen in us. This means that death is working in us, but life is working in you.
But Lord, our communities may be hard pressed, but they are not crushed. In fact, we see your light shining out of the darkness. We see leaders rising up in our communities and it is these leaders we want to pray for now. Lord, we pray that you will give them wisdom. May their decisions be bought, marked by justice and honesty. Give them compassion as they listen and respond to growing need. We pray for Forward South as they coordinate a South Belfast community response. We pray for LORAG, the Markets Community Development Association and Donegal Pass Forum as they manage the telephone helplines, the local grocery delivery service, help with gas and electricity top-ups, help with prescription collections, delivery of meals to the elderly. Lord, heal those who are already sick in our local community. Lord, we pray for alternatives as they find new ways to support vulnerable youth and those they work with in Hyde Bank. Lord, make them fearless leaders. We pray for Deirdre Hargey from the Markets, who is our new Minister for the Department of Communities. Lord, give Deirdre your wisdom, your strength, your courage. Pray for our team as they implement benefit support to the many who have lost their jobs. Lord, we pray for fast, efficient systems to deliver this money to struggling families. Lord, we pray for Food Bank. We pray for Bruce, Victoria and Brenda as they change and adapt their systems to meet the growing need. We pray for safety and health for the volunteers as they pack and deliver, for the agencies processing vouchers, for the team working with asylum seekers, refugees and the Roma community. Lord, we pray for Solace, working with children with autism and special educational needs. Surround the Solace team with your peace as they prepare sensory packs, make daily contact with family, plan a respite program using PPE equipment. Lord, we pray for Home Plus as they deliver care to our homeless citizens. Thank you for providing a thousand pounds and other monies this week to help provide sandwiches for the next 12 weeks. Lord, keep the team safe as they deliver food, clothes and bedding. Lord, we pray for more beds and shelter. Eliminate homelessness in our city during COVID-19 and forever. Lord, every charity in our community is hurting just now. COVID-19 lockdown has just wiped three months' income off their books. No Belfast Marathon sponsorship, no sh charity shops income, no daffodil teas. Let's think of those charities close to Fitzroy. Mornington and Trocket, the 174 Trust and others. We pray for staff teams as they adapt to online programmes. We pray for management teams as they manage cash flow to save the charity. We pray for love works, baking bread, repairing bicycles and gardening. Also the Jubilee Farm which provides an opportunity to connect with food, farming and nature. Both these cooperatives are having to adapt and change their business model to survive. Pray. We pray for decisive leadership. We pray for generous donors. Lord, move our hearts to give to the charities on our heart. We need them to survive, to be there when we come out of lockdown. We need them to continue to care for the vulnerable and be there for the societal fallout from COVID-19. We never give up. Our bodies are gradually dying, 
but we ourselves are being made stronger each day. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Things that are seen don't last forever, but things that are not seen are eternal. This is why we keep our minds on the things that cannot be seen. The word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, as Paul prayed for the Corinthians at the end of chapter 4, we too want to pray the same prayer for our communities. So we are not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Lord, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to see your grace flowing through the streets of our local communities during COVID-19. Amen. Oh, you did not have a home. There were places you visited frequently. You took off your shoes and scratched your feet. Because you knew that the whole world belonged to me. You did not have a home. No, you did not have it. Oh. And you did not take a wife. There were pretty maids all in a row who lined up to touch the hem of your robe, but you had no place to take them, so you did not take a wife. No, you did not take it wide. Birds have nests, foxes have dens. The hope of the whole world rests on the shoulders of a homeless man. You had the shoulders of a homeless man, and you did not have it. What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. What a verse that is for the days that we're living in. I haven't over the last few weeks, but it's near enough time for me to quote you too. And it has been with me this past week, their song, Stuck in a Moment. 
it's very easy for us to get stuck in a moment. And actually, very quickly, we have got stuck in a moment. We had a Four Corners Festival meeting a couple of weeks ago, and, and I just sensed that we were planning a festival next February. And we were thinking about next February in the moment that we're in now, and we weren't considering that that moment might pass. We, we were a wee bit stuck in a moment. If you're thinking about getting married, it's wrong to be stuck in a moment. I always used to say to the students, don't think about the moment on the dance floor when they're 21 or 22 and they're looking really handsome. Look ahead. Look ahead to the moment where we're in our rocking chairs around the fire in the cottage. Do you still want to be with that person at that point? To be stuck in a moment can get us into all kinds of trouble. And of course, coronavirus is far from romantic. Other people would, of course, say we need to embrace the moment. Ben Glover, who I did a blog with this week, he's a singer songwriter from Glen Arm who's now living in Nashville. And I know that Ben's into his mindfulness. And, and he was saying in a, a little session he did online to embrace the moment or stay in the moment. What he was meaning, I think, was not to look far, too far ahead in the coronavirus, not to get anxious about that, but just to take one step at a time. I don't think the two contradict each other, but I think embracing the moment is different if we know why we shouldn't be stuck in that moment. For Paul, Jesus is the key. If we went through 2 Corinthians 4, I could show you how at the outset of that chapter, Paul says that Jesus is the ministry that he has and why he has a ministry. That he goes on to say that Jesus is the message of the ministry, that God and Jesus gives him the power to do the ministry and that actually the thanksgiving and the praise go back to Jesus. Jesus is crucial. And that's why we've gathered to worship this morning, because uh, Jesus is central to what we believe. And that's where Paul is able to find the um, the argument and the sense of this phrase that seems incredibly crazy, that the things that we see are temporary and the things that we on, that we don't see are eternal. Because what Paul's seeing is this salvation history that is centered on Jesus. Now, it's Palm Sunday, and I have to say that I had this passage picked and I had a direction to go with the sermon before I remembered that it was Palm Sunday. Easter has just kind of caught up on me a wee bit, which is good news because, do you know, it's only another week before we can eat some chocolate again. But it, 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 it threw me so much that I started to go, oh, no, am I going to have to rewrite the sermon? How can, how can Palm Sunday and 2 Corinthians 4 work? And, of course, it does perfectly because Jesus, as he comes into Jerusalem in that first Palm Sunday, is literally stuck in a moment. He's in a moment that is going to be very different than the moment he's in five days later. Now, Jesus, as I keep telling us, and I go on about it as a mantra, it shows to us the humility of our God. We believe in a God who is the God of the manger, the donkey, and the cross. And so when Jesus comes into Jerusalem, he embraces that humility, and he embraces the praise that he's getting from the people. But he knows it's only a moment. Jesus is only too well aware that those people can turn. And of course, on the Friday, they do turn, and they call for his crucifixion. So, so Jesus is in a moment that uh, for the next number of days in Jerusalem are going to be tricky. He's going to be in Gethsemane praying as with drops of blood that the cup would be taken from him. He doesn't want to go to the cross. He's going to hang on a cross and cry, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And then shout, it is finished. And in those moments, I believe that Jesus was able to get through because he knew the salvation history that he was a part of. He knew that that culmination moment of Good Friday and Easter Sunday uh, were part of something that had been going on since Abraham took those first steps of faith and would go on into the new kingdom and the church that he was going to form and the eternity that lay out ahead of us. Because he knew that arc of salvation history, he was able to get through the moment, as Paul here. Now, don't forget that Paul tells the Philippians that he has come to be content whatever the situation. Hard-pressed, crushed, perplexed, persecuted, 
Paul had all of those. And if you listen to Gary's brilliant 10 minutes on Paul and anxiety last Sunday night in his series, Paul and 10, you will find that the world that Paul lives in is one that would crush you. It would make you feel perplexed and hard crushed. And it would make you feel that you were being persecuted. In the midst of that, Paul, because he sees that arc of salvation history and that he knows this is just a moment, he's able to say what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. I remember my old boss, John Dixon, uh, telling me that once he was in a, stuck in a bit of a moment when he was in his ministry in Rathfryland. And he went up to a, a hill mountain nearby. I don't know the geography of Rathfryland, so I have no idea where that was. But he said that he looked down from the height uh, onto a, a smaller Rathfryland and it got perspective. And that's what Paul is giving us here. He's giving us a perspective on the moment. In Ecclesiastes, the writer says that there's nothing new under the sun, which suggests to me that he's saying that we need to start to look above the sun. The vertical connection with God makes sense of the horizontal. And if we begin to see things the way God sees things as he looks across history and salvation history, then we will be able to see that this moment is just 60 seconds on the clock. It's just a little coronavirus times that we're going to look back on in history or other people are going to write essays in history or we're going to ask ourselves, did we learn anything from that moment? But it's not a moment to get stuck in. It's a moment when we begin to see that salvation history and where we begin to see that Paul's right, that we have been hard pressed, that we have been crushed, that we have been perplexed, but that we can see it the way Paul sees it, fixing our eyes on Jesus and the eternal and that salvation history story. So today, whatever it is are the issues that are getting you down, let's begin to see that this is only a moment. And in that moment, embrace it. I'll be thinking about that a little bit later in the week, probably in my Facebook Lives or on my message to go out to Fitzroy. But let's embrace the moment, not start worrying about what's ahead of us because Jesus says we don't add anything to our height or anything to our good looks or anything to anything by worrying about tomorrow. We embrace the moment, but we also see the moment in the context of the eternal. And when we begin to see that, and we begin to trust in this Jesus, and we begin to fix our eyes on this Jesus, maybe that'll be the thing that'll see us through these moments. Maybe it'll get us through Gethsemane. Maybe it'll get us through Good Friday. Maybe it'll get us to that resurrection next Sunday when we'll celebrate a whole new world bursting through. Let us close our service by worshiping God in a song that tells us that when we were lost, we were rescued.
thank you so much um, for watching this morning. I'd like to thank the Black family for the worship, uh, to Paul Bowman for the song, uh, to Heather for those incredible prayers, and Aaron for reading so well. I'd like to thank Alison and uh, Richard for all the work they do uh, to put this together. There is uh, no prayer ministry, but if you send us prayers, they will be prayed for. And there is no tea and coffee, but we suggest you go off now and make your own tea and coffee. I know that I will. Uh, during the week, I was thinking about um, benedictions. And I like to sort of dabble a wee bit with benedictions. So I wrote this one. I hope to write a few more during these coronavirus times. Um, but here's one for this morning, and I pray it for us all. May God's love be a constant companion. May Jesus' teaching be illuminated in this dark. And may the Holy Spirit lead us into what to do for others and how to care for ourselves. Amen. Thanks for watching. Is that us live? How can we see that? Am I going to only see that or not? You can tell we have no idea what we're doing in the Facebook world. I don't think. Oh, look, look, look. That's what it's saying there. Is nobody seeing us? Is that the probe? Oh, look, I think we're on. Take care of others and pray for the NHS. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Now we have no idea how to turn it off. <laughs> how do we do that? Let me think. Leave this page. <laughs> oh, you're a good one. I think we're still on live. No. Yeah. 38 people. How do you switch it off, Caitlin? We are having a blast. I see that there's 34 people like their laugh. The wee laugh zappers are coming up. <laughs> this is the bit you're loving the most. The bit loving the most. We have no idea how to switch it off. We can do that later in the week. Yep. Ah, wrong. I put that in as a blipper, Alison. I want to hear that <laughs> ah, as a blipper. I want to see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs>